Good morning. Ramblin' Rusty here. Today, I am going to take you on a drive along the Skyline Drive. We will be starting out at Swift Run Gap, which is located uh, right up Route 33. That's where 33 goes over the mountain. From there, we're going to drive north to Thornton Gap. The, the whole idea of the Skyline Drive was that uh, there was a search for a national park site in the east. And so a group called the Southern Appalachian National Park Committee to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, their job was to find a site accessible to the 40 million plus Americans living along the eastern cities. This was about 80 years ago. The committee recommended the site that today is visited by millions of people every year, Shenandoah National Park. As part of the recommendation, the committee recognized the proliferation of the automobiles and suggested that the greatest single feature of the park would be that the automobiles could see many different sites of both the Shenandoah Valley on the west and uh, the Piedmont Plain to the east. But in 1933, when it was uh, being constructed, Franklin Delano Roosevelt approved the construction of the Blue Ridge Parkway to connect the Skyline Drive with the proposed Great Smoky Mountains National Park that it would be over 400 miles to the south. Blue Ridge Parkway would be a federal highway. In order to set up the parkway, it, they needed to displace a number of people who had lived there, some of the early residents. The residents were given a chance to move elsewhere and a chance to possibly uh, buy some property that they would move to the CCC would also help them move. Quite a bit of this work was done by the Civilian Conservation Corps. They spent thousands of hours building beautiful rock walls, landscaping overlooks to make Skyline Drive the experience it's been for over 80 years. People in charge of the parkway were willing to ap approve two temporary places where people could stop and buy things. One of them was the Skyland Camp, and the other was the Panorama Tea Room. And they were given the okay to continue to operate on the grounds that these buildings would fulfill a public necessity. By 1928, the resort included a tea room, summer hotel, five cottages, a dining room, bathhouses, miniature golf courses, tennis courts, and other service buildings. The bungalow-style hotel with 14 guest rooms had four baths. The tea room had accommodations for overnight desks, but also served regular meals. It's interesting that the tea room is still in service, we actually stopped there and ate. They had a vegetarian burger for us. And the other part was the panorama. It used to be right up from 211. And in fact, one year, I can remember going there for, for a banquet that was held there from Shenandoah Valley Academy. Well, in 1933, the first Civilian Conservation Corps camps established in the Shenandoah as Skyline and Big Meadows. Big Meadows is a very nice place to stop. They have a very good little museum. You can see the history of the Shenandoah Valley and also the Skyline Drive. And so under the leadership of the National Park Service architects, CCC, Enrollees and engineers helped build Skyland Drive stone walls and overlooks, including one at Jewel Hollow. As you drive through the National Park, 
you'll see plenty of the fruits of the CCC's labor. They replaced boulders, they graded slopes, they transplanted trees and shrub. Much of the work blends seamlessly with natural landscape, but the walls sort of stand out as visible testament to the quality and the permanence of the, of the CCC's work. The stone walls of Shenandoah Valley National Park were built in two styles. There was the dry laid style and the ashlar. Dry laid walls are those that you can see a few every now and then. These can be built by less experienced stone workers, like the young men of the CCC, since they require only moving and aligning, aligning heavy stones, more muscle than skill. Later on, the mortared Ashler masonry walls require more expertise and had to be built by experienced masons. The drive was a beautiful time, and uh, right as we were going toward the end, up at Thornton Gap, coming up toward to 11, we went through a small tunnel there. But if you get a chance, take time to go through and see the Skyline Drive. The section that we drove on was deemed by the little brochure that they put out. This is the most scenic part of the whole Skyline Drive Parkway. We stopped at a number of them and if you take time, please stop by and see and visit Skyline Drive. It's not that far away. Ramblin' Rusty signing off for now.